All right, hello, I'm Nate Novak. Uh, I'm from Orca Maritime Incorporated in Imperial Beach. Uh, so today I'm gonna be talking to you about, oops, let me get this going here, uh, autonomous underwater vehicle data processing workflows. And I'm gonna be discussing the methods in which we collect, process, and share all of our uh, survey data from unmanned systems. So I just wanted to go ahead and summarize a little bit about our company. Uh, we're a small company owned by two US explosive ordnance disposal experts. And they're continuing to be the forefront of their field in EOD and continue their leadership as expert consultants for the US Navy. Orca Maritime specializes in underwater imagery as well as data collection using autonomous underwater vehicles, remotely operated vehicles, uh, and towed systems and, diver, and divers as well. So autonomous underwater vehicles are key tools for collecting a multitude of data, including side scan sonar, bathymetry, and a multitude of, of oceanographic properties. Uh, these vehicles are ideal for a few reasons. One is that multiple simultaneous surveys with no increase in crew size or support vessels uh, are required. So that along with multiple co-registered data sets can be collected, meaning that side scan sonar and bath uh, bathymetry can be collected at the same time. Um, due to, due to uh, the fact that you can mission plan to a pinpoint accuracy, repeatable missions, uh, can be used to uh, enhance uh, the GIS if, if there needs to be any um, repeat in data workflows. So remotely operated vehicles are used to get um, visual inspections as well as recovering targets. They are ideal for any operations where we require HD video recording, uh, we typically use a GoPro mounted on there, as well as cut and grab capabilities allow um, the uh, ability to cut line or grab any type of buoys. So this is an example of a nighttime operation. Typically we'll use the AUVs in the nighttime in order to avoid high levels of vessel traffic during the day in the Bay of San Diego. So that's deploying uh, one of the AUVs here. This right here is uh, just a short example of what the AUV looks like as it's traveling through the water column. <clears throat> so we build underwater geographic information systems um, and customize components for uh, GIS in order to complement existing GIS programs as well as standalone planning tools. So our GIS typically includes uh, various information. Uh, we use them as a repository for sonar imagery, bathymetry, uh, water quality, and characteristics such as uh, temperature, salinity, uh, and so on. Habitat boundaries and health uh, can be in there if the client requests it. Chart drawings in port restricted areas are acquired from um, from any authorities and also input into our geo databases, as well as any uh, 2D or 3D infrastructure. Uh, we can perform trend analyses, such as uh, this bathymetry change detection uh, between 2004 and 2010, just showing a sediment buildup near cold water intakes of a LNG plant. Uh, we can also use this underwater geographic information system to complement uh, current decision tools and site management programs. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how we process side scan um, from end to end. So we collect the raw AUV data, we process it, we integrate it into the ArcGIS platform, and then we can configure systems of engagement to share it. So what I want to do now is walk you through a step-by-step -step process and how we actually go ahead and process all that data. This is a cutaway of our Ocean Server Iver 3. Um, it's a highly portable but effective AUV that provides quality data uh, with 
a near real-time post-mission analysis capability. So we use AUV-mounted side-scan sonar transducers to collect acoustic data. They combine surface GPS and subsurface DVL, Doppler velocity log. These are sensors that help the vehicle understand where it is while it's inside, um, while it's under the water. So uh, the depth sensor and the calibrated compass also provide data so that we can correct it once uh, we're processing it. So we export these images out as geotiffs at a spatial resolution of six hundredths of a meter. And we, uh, we can also combine that with our co-registered swath bathymetry. This is an example of the USS Hogan off San Diego. It's a Wix Clemson destroyer sunk in World War II, and it lies in 125 feet of water. This, uh, this is just going to, I'm just going to run through the field data collection efforts. This is a program that we use called Vector Map to do mission planning. Using this program, um, we can set parameters such as uh, vehicle speed, uh, waypoints, location. Uh, this gives us all the information on the battery information. We set these waypoints ahead of time in order to save um, you know, time when we're out in the water. Obviously, field operations are expensive, so it's important to get all that done before we go out for the day. When operating in a hazardous environment, having a populated GIS is um, very important to increase situational awareness of the environment. So right here on the left is an example of how the AUV collects side scan sonar. Um, as it performs its mission, the sonar transducers collect data from the water column as well as the seabed. And dual side scan sonar transducers use fundamental acoustic return, uh, remote sensing to collect that imagery. On the right hand side, you can see um, what we call is what we call uh, Sonar Pro. We use it to do post-mission analysis directly after the mission. So uh, when we bring the vehicle on deck, we download the data and inspect the side scan just to make, make sure that there aren't any uh, type of distortions in the imagery. This is an example of Clean Sweep 3. Uh, this is our primary side scan sonar program. On the pane of the right, we have depth, vehicle speed, uh, heave, roll, yaw, pitch, and a multitude of other sensor data to assist us in understanding vehicle attitude and behavior during a mission so we can process the data correctly. So as you can see on the left-hand side, we have Bathy, and, and then we also have um, a lot of other parameters we can set with along with tracks on the uh, upper left-hand side. During data processing, we use this attitude data or the vehicle height off the bottom to remove any type of um, nadir, what's called the nadir zone. It's this area on the, in the right in the center, it's this black. So we set it, it's called bottom tracking. And by doing this, we can stitch together the port and the starboard sides of the vehicle. Similar to digitally processing on a program like Photoshop, uh, we apply various gains and we treat the image sonar uh, in order to increase image consistency, contrast, and quality. So right here you can see that we apply angle variance gain. Essentially what it does is it applies um, a certain amount of brightness, hue, contrast to the entire image to ensure that it's um, showing any type of contacts that we have. It can also be used to uh, correct for any type of banding. You can apply it to small, oops, you can apply it to small um, sections of the side scan sonar. And at that point, you can adjust any uh, gains using the gain database on the lower right hand side. So a great way to consolidate and organize all this survey data and associated metadata is by using uh, what we call a bathymetric information system. Uh, it's Esri solution using the Bathy extension for ArcGIS. Uh, we're currently in the process of testing uh, the viability. And using this 
BIS, you can query for underwater imagery by date, vehicle type, and mission specifics. So the graphic on the left shows the Coronado Bay Bridge and a small side scan survey, as, as well as an associated image which shows a vertical, um, it shows a vertical inspection of the stanchions. The uh, image on the right shows a side scan sonar mosaic. And using this, we were able to locate a small fishing vessel, which you can see uh, blown up right here. So once we located it, we were able to go down on it using a remotely operated vehicle. So using a uh, Seabotics VLB V300, we were able to uh, visually inspect the target using a tethered vehicle. So we can operate this um, on deck with a, it's a integrated cons console where you have a joystick and you're able to operate the vehicle. So this is a short example of this. Um, so ultimately, all of our data sets are cataloged within ArcGIS for desktop and ArcGIS Pro. A great aspect of using ArcGIS is its flexibility and long list of capable fo uh, compatible formats. So we incorporate, uh, like I said, imagery of side scan, bathy, and magnetometer data. Um, points of interest include attachments, which can be anything from photos and videos to documents. Sonar images, uh, as you can see on the figure to the right are small images of the contacts, photos, video footage, uh, extensive attribute tables, and it's all consolidated into a geodatabase. When co collecting data using an AUV, the data is then archived within ArcGIS. So historical data is useful for the purpose of mission planning and providing a higher level of situational awareness for our operators. On the left-hand side, you can see um, the image in the center will show you a canopy forming kelp between 1989 and 2014 for the San Diego area. Um, that's a feature service on ArcGIS Online. And then on the right-hand side, you can see a, a depth curve selection within ArcGIS Pro. When performing missions, the vehicle collects data points twice per second. On the left-hand side, you can see the track line of the vehicle at depth. So after we clean up the data, um, we will then interpolate it using uh, inverse distance weighted, and we'll go ahead and clean up the raster, and at that point, we can then generate a smooth surface with all the environmental variables. The Esri ArcGIS platform features an expansive way of sharing customized data sets with ArcGIS and non-GIS users. So Orca Maritime is in the process of implementing web and mobile-based apps for uh, displaying content and our infrastructure. And this is done using systems of engagement, such as Collector, uh, Operations Dashboard, Explorer for ArcGIS, and Web App Builder for ArcGIS. Currently, we're utilizing the Maritime Chart service, as well as a web app. Uh, we have bathymetry data and metadata management applied on our desktop solution. And we're also ingesting S57 level uh, charting data. At this point, we're operating under the initial operating capability, developing towards the integrated enterprise system. Uh, we're in the process of moving towards the use of vessel traffic, getting real-time feeds from GeoEvent extension for server, uh, as well as many other uh, amazing capabilities using um, resources that Esri has provided from uh, the Esri partner network and uh, many other of Esri's teams. At this time, I'd like to thank you and open up the forum to any questions. Thanks, Nate. Again, we'll take questions in the lobby over social hour. Just keep it moving. Uh, thanks so much.